I had a student ask me a really important and a really difficult question about topology. He was working on this gun right here, and as he was modeling the buttstock, he came across this piece right here, which, as you can see, is quite complex because of all these little lines that you have here. And he wanted to know how I would create this, but it's also important that you create this or that I show him how to create this in a way that it can connect to the other geometry on this buttstock. So this is a really difficult topology question. I'm going to show you how I would solve this problem, and then hopefully you're going to be able to take away some topology lessons so you can apply them in your own workflows. Now we're going to start up a new file because this one is a little bit slow because there's a lot of polygons. And this is where I'm going to show you how I would create this thing. OK, first things first, you're going to need to start with a cylinder. OK, and that cylinder or we can do a circle. It can have it needs to have 32 vertices. And then we're going to extrude this up by whatever. It can be something like this. Right now, we're also going to need a loop cut right here. And we're going to have to delete the back half of this circle. Or maybe before we delete this, we're going to scale it down on the x-axis by something like 0.5. That's going to give us the kind of thinner shape of the cylinder. It's not like a fully round cylinder. It's like it's a little bit compressed. Okay, so that's why we're scaling it down here. And then we're going to delete the back side of this because we're not going to need that. That's going to be inside the buttstock. And we're left with something sort of like this. Once you have something like this, we're going to select everything except some of the faces on the sides like this. With I, we're going to inset this, and now we have to make the corners here a little round. So we're going to place the 3D cursor onto this vertex. And notice how I inset this with I only until I get this little square shape here. So let me do that one more time just so you understand exactly what I did here. And I'm also going to turn on my screencast key so you guys can see the buttons that I'm pressing. But as I inset this, right now, you can see that I want to bring it around here. Well, anyway, any whatever distance I inset it by, it's always going to be a square. But anyway, this has to be the width of that little gap here. So now I want to have my 3D cursor over here and I'm going to set the pivot point to 3D cursor. So that way, when I select these vertices here, I can scale them down and they're going to scale evenly. So these edges are going to keep the same length approximately. And it turns into a little semicircle on the side here. Now, it's very important that you remember exactly how far you scale this. So you have to put in a number. I'm going to put in 0.7, maybe 0.75 or something like that. 0.72, I think, is probably a good number for this. And we're going to do the same thing one more time over here on the other side. Okay, so scale 0.72. And now we have this little shape of which you can use to create the little cut here. Now, we didn't really have to do this on the other side because we're probably going to, we're probably better off deleting one half and then just mirroring everything onto the other side. So now we have to delete this inner geometry here with X delete faces, place the 3D cursor onto this vertex here in the corner, the one that we scaled inwards towards the 3D cursor, and then select these vertices over here, extrude, right click and scale with shift Y so that we exclude the Y axis from the scaling. And we're going to scale this to zero. And that way it's going to align with this vertex over here. And then we're just going to snap this vertex onto the 3D cursor in this corner right here. Okay. By the way, guys, I know that I'm using a lot of very complicated uh, uh, shortcuts and tools here, which you, if you're beginners are probably a little bit difficult for you to follow. I described and explained all of this shit inside my ebook. So I have a blender ebook. You can see it in the description below. I basically broke down every single tool that I ever used for modeling, hard surface modeling, topology, everything that you're ever going to need for modeling. You can find all that stuff in the ebook. You can also see this inside my blender course where this student asked me the question. So if you need some help with your models, if you want to find some more guidance on how to learn about Blender, how to become a professional 3D artist, how to build a portfolio and all this. We talk about those kind of things inside my Blender school, so you can find everything in there. But anyway, now we're going to place the 3D cursor onto the next vertex here. And once again, we're going to select this loop here, which is currently disconnected. Extrude, right click, scale, S to scale, shift Y to exclude the Y axis. And once again, scale to zero. And then once again, with shift S, you're going to snap the, the vertex here to the 3D cursor. Okay. Now the 3D cursor is over here in the middle. So now we can select all this geometry, shift the right click and the 3D cursor is still a pivot point. So if we scale, it's going to scale towards the 3D cursor. So we're going to scale this to minus one on the Z axis with control N. We're going to have to correct the normals. Well, maybe we better do that a little bit later. But now, since everything is still disconnected, we have to select everything and press M merge by distance. That's going to connect to the places where we have two vertices in the same place. OK. And now you can do control N to correct the normals. I think it just pulled them all inwards. But anyway, we'll fix it later again. And now we can place the cursor over here. Shift the right click scale to minus one of the Y axis, correct the normals, select everything M merge by distance to connect this middle part. And now we have one section of this gun right here. Let me pull up uh, the picture for you from my desktop here. 
so you can see what we're supposed to be looking at like this okay and now we have this lower part and first now we're going to array this so we're going to stack a bunch of these on top of each other and after that we're going to shear it so we get the right angle so let me show you how to do this properly okay so first of all go to the array mod uh, go to the modifiers tab add modifier generate array and you, you want zero on the x-axis and you want one on the z-axis in the relative offset section in the array modifier and then we're going to set the count to whatever 16 or something i don't know what the right number is going to be probably more like 32 or 30 or whatever it doesn't really matter if you're going to do something like this you might want to count the number of lines you have here but i'm not going to do that because i don't want to waste time for this tutorial and once we have this array applied or once we have this array, we're going to apply it because currently we just have one object and we just get a preview of what the array modifier is going to do. We want to have all this geometry editable. So we're going to go to object mode and apply the array modifier like this. Select everything. Currently, they're probably still disconnected, as you can see right here. So select everything. Once again, M merge by distance. And then this is very important because now we're going to give this a little bit of an angle. Well, before we give it an angle, we still have to connect. We still have to make a little hemisphere over here at the top or it's a probably a quarter of a sphere and to do that we're going to place our 3d cursor between these two vertices over here on the corners shift s cursor is selected and then in object mode with shift a we're going to add a cube now the reason that we're adding a cube is so that we can subdivide it and turn it into a sphere and then we're not going to have any triangles because when you add a uv sphere you got these triangles on top and that can cause you all sorts of problems. I don't really like that. Well, you could have used the UV sphere. It's not really going to be a problem. But the topology in general is better when you do control three. When you subdivide this to three levels, okay, you get exactly 32 vertices on the circumference of this or on the, what do you call this, around this sphere, right on the equator of this ball right here, which is exactly right because we had 32 vertices on the circle that we created here initially which means when we cut this shit up in half and whatever, we're going to be able to connect this perfectly. So apply this modifier so we have the geometry. Then go ahead and add the cast modifier here. Set the factor to 1. That's just going to slightly reshape this so we get a perfect sphere out of it here. Here's, here's what we had before this modifier. It was something like this. And then when you add the cast modifier with a shape value of 1, as you can see, it's a little bit different, right? So here's without, here's with. So it's a little bit more of a ball. Apply this modifier as well. And now go to top view. And from top view, you're going to scale this up a little bit like this. Okay. You want to zoom in on this part. Make sure that your pivot point is exactly in the middle of the ball. So shift S cursor to select it since the 3D cursor is the pivot point. And now you're going to scale this up a little bit on the Y axis just to make sure it connects perfectly with this little side right here or as closely as possible. Right now we're in top view orthographic projection. So you can see that now I can zoom in infinitely almost and make sure that these are connecting. And now with SX, I'm going to scale this down on the x-axis until it approximately aligns over here. This doesn't have to be exact because now we're going to delete the bottom half of this circle or of this sphere. Then we're going to go to top view and we're going to select the back half, which we're also going to delete. And we're also going to delete this segment over here at the bottom so that we can join these together in object mode with control J. And then we can go to edge select mode, select this edge loop, shift, alt, right click, or click to select this edge loop here. Now for me, this is W to open up this menu over here, which allows me to bridge edge loops. For you, it might be right click because it, it kind of depends on how you set up your shortcuts. For me, I use my right click to select and I use my left click to snap the 3D cursor around. So for you, I think right click might open up this menu, but for me, it's W bridge edge loops. Otherwise, you can probably dig this shit up somewhere. I don't know exactly where you're going to be able to find this edge. There you go, bridge edge loops in edit mode, okay? So now you have this ball up here. So now the shape is more or less ready. We just have to place the 3D cursor at the bottom here. My origin is here, so I can do this in object mode. Otherwise, if you're in edit mode, or if you don't have your origin here, you could just place the 3D cursor into, uh, in between these two vertices, and it's going to be exactly in the middle. And now you go to edit mode, and this is the best part. This is where shit gets crazy. So now we're going to turn on the shear tool in edit mode, Make sure the pivot point is set to 3D cursor because now you can kind of shear this like this, okay? Keep in mind, this is totally different from rotating the object because if you rotate this object, let's say around the x-axis, it keeps the same shape. It just rotates it. It just pivots it. But this kind of stretches it out only on the x-axis. Of course, you can do this in all these different directions. And I'm talking about the x-axis as marked by this little line. It's actually the y-axis in this case, but that's besides the point. It's red. That's why I called it the x-axis. 
Maybe it's the local x-axis for this object. It isn't, whatever. So now you can use this to shear it. So it's kind of like you're, you're kind of stretching it out like this. Okay, imagine if you have an image, you take the top edge and you just pull it to the side and it stretches out. That's kind of what you're doing. And we're going to set the offset number here to minus 0 0.8, although it will probably be much better. Minus 0 0.8, I did something wrong. It will probably be much better if we first scale this up by, let's say, 1.5 to make it thicker. And now we can shear this by minus 0 0.8 or whatever the right angle is going to be for you. You might have to play around with this a little bit more. You might have to rotate it or whatever the case may be. But now, as you can see back here, this is pretty much the shape that we were trying to go for. Of course, you can still work on some more details here. For example, I'm also probably going to want to bevel these edges on the outline here. So like this, alt right click, shift, alt right click. I'll select a few of these. Shift G, select similar face angles to select the others. I'm going to reduce the threshold a little bit because I don't want to select the edges on the inside. And then with control B, I'm going to bevel these a little bit. Now, let me just set the shape value here to one, two segments, object shade smooth. Okay, so now this looks cute. And now this is how you can create this type of shape. And the most important thing here is this. Okay, this is the, the key takeaway for why I created this using this particular method. Let me, let me tell you. So when you're working with complex topology like this, where everything has to be connected, you always want to try and make sure that you have what's called geometric consistency. This is how I refer, I refer to this uh, concept, okay? What I'm talking about is you want all your faces to have approximately the same shape and approximately the same size, okay? So in this case, I have only squares, more or less. Some of them are a little bit stretched out, okay, like this. But as you can see, I'm, I'm not really going to have anything like anything crazy, like some very long and thin faces like this or some weird triangles and stuff like that. Everything is flowing nicely. Everything is more or less even, okay? Except these bevels over here, but that's okay because I'm not going to have to do anything else here. But on the outside, I have very even faces. I have equal edges on the outside of this. It's all evenly distributed, which means now it makes it very easy for me to take some of this geometry, for example, like this section, and then I can extrude this out. And then I can do the same thing over here, maybe with some more up all the way up until here, let's say like this. And then I would do the same thing on the other side, probably. I would exclude the vertices from over here. I would be able to do the same thing over here on the other side. So we can pull this out on the y-axis and then we can extrude this up a little bit. Of course, you're going to want to straighten this out and uh, cut this with a knife tool maybe so it's all straight. And then you can add more loop cuts here so you have more squares. And this is what's going to allow you to create all sorts of other shapes like the ones that you have back here. So now, for example, let's say hypothetically, if we're trying to do this for real, we want to create these other dents in the back. So now what we can do is, I think we should probably do this one more time. Let me just quickly demonstrate this to you because this is really important. So now we can take this uh, segment further to the back like this. We can scale it to zero on the y-axis like this and then add a bunch of loop cuts here so we have more or less square faces. Of course, these are a little bit bigger than these. That's besides the point, really. We want some squares over here as well. And now we can just sort of take some surfaces from over here. I'm just doing this quickly just to show you and extrude these backwards like this. Or maybe we can delete them at the bottom and all this. But anyway, it becomes very easy to continue adding more shapes to this mesh now. And everything is going to be nicely connected now. You can also add some circular holes in set with I. Obviously, if, if you're going to do this, you're going to do it a lot better than I'm doing it right now. I'm just rushing through it, okay? But the idea is you can now very easily model all sorts of shapes out of this object. And everything is going to be very well connected. So this is the kind of thing that you have to keep in mind when you're creating very sophisticated objects like this, okay? This is why this is really difficult. And this is why I highly recommend that you watch Thomas Collin 3D on YouTube because he's the one that taught me this type of shit. Before I met Thomas Collin, I didn't know fuck all about topology. I was just modeling with fucking Boolean modifiers and shit like that, which for many reasons, which I'm not going to get into in this video, is probably not the best thing to do, okay? But if you watch Thomas Collin, you think about shit like this that I just described to you here. So this is how you're going to be able to create this rifle. This is how I created the rifle that I showed you earlier, which, by the way, I have a video for on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can message me on Instagram. Also, check out my Blender School, my Digitally Enhanced Club. The link is in the description. This is where you can learn more about Blender and becoming a pro and all this stuff. And check out the ebook if you want to learn more tips and tricks like this. I'll see you guys in the next one.